Hi guys, it's me again. Uh, I'm recording on a new mic. My friend is right here and uh, he's listening to the audio as we do this. He's my sound guy now. So, anyways, out of the Showa era Ultraman entries, Ace is the one I see talked about the least. From what I gather, people either love or hate Ace. I personally fell on the more negative side of that spectrum when I first went through it, but I have decided to give Ace another shot. So let's see if it still falls flat, or if it exceeds my expectations. Before we get into the review though, uh, let's go over some general info about the show. Ace is the fifth entry of the Ultra series following Return of Ultraman. It premiered the week after Return of Ultraman aired its last episode on April 7th of 1972. This show would actually be kind of integral to the way Ultraman seasons market themselves as originally this was going to be Ultra Ace but they ultimately decided to go with Ultraman Ace to avoid copyright issues with the toy company. Ultraman Ace is a unique show in that it's the first to have an Ultra with multiple hosts. Ace's human hosts are Seiji Hokuto, played by Keiji Takamine, and Yuko Minami, played by Mitsuko Hoshi. They're members of TAC, or the Terrible Monster Attack crew. Other members of TAC include Captain Goro Ryu, played by Tetsuro Sagawa, Noriko Mikawa, played by Keiko Nishi, Ichiro Yamanaka, played by Shunichi Okita, and Tsutomo Kono, played by Masaki Yamamoto. Ace is also the first entry to have a serialized plot in a big bad villain. The big bad being the extra-dimensional alien invaders, the Yapul. The show centers around Tak's efforts to confront the Yapul and their terrible monsters and bring peace to the Earth. However, because of the Yapul's ever more absurd plans for conquest, the TAC members begin to question themselves and each other as the terrible monsters are like no other monsters ever fought before. I'm writing this just after finishing the final episode, and I gotta say this is definitely one of the Ultra Shows of all time. The first 29 episodes are all very solid in their own rights, but after about episode 30, the show begins to lose its steam until around maybe episode 45. That's not to say there's no good episodes in that stretch, but there's just a very evident dip in quality. I really like the two host concept, but I don't think the show executed it very well. It felt like the writers often struggled with finding a way to make Minami relevant in episodes that didn't make her a central focus. It also doesn't help that Minami is basically just written out of the show in the 29th episode. Minami being removed from the show isn't entirely the fault of the writers, as from what I've heard, Minami was written out of the show as she got a lot of hate from the young male target audience of the time. So all in all, just an unfortunate set of circumstances around that whole aspect of the show. Minami's removal is unfortunate for two other reasons, as one, she is just so much more likable than Hokuto in my opinion, and two, they replace her character with the child character Dan. I don't hate child characters in Toku, like a lot of other people do, but Dan leaves a lot to be desired. He has a strong introduction as this rowdy, rambunctious type of kid who's getting into fights and constantly misunderstood by his classmates, but his later appearances turn him into Jiro Light and kind of just strip him of his interesting personality traits. Hokuto is just an okay protagonist. He doesn't have as much charm as any of the previous Ultra hosts, but he isn't awful. He's just very boring and a little dumb. Minami was the superior host in my opinion. She's a lot more thoughtful than Hokuto is. She's what balances out Hokuto and she always has his back even in situations that turn the rest attack against him. This goes vice versa with Hokuto as well. The rest attack just aren't very interesting. They're all either just cardboard cutouts of people or archetypes. The only ones that stood out to me were Kono and Mikawa. Mikawa is one of the more competent members attack and one of the only ones that got like a really good focus episode. Kono was kind of tax comic relief. He always said a little prayer and had a really good focus episode. The rest of Tech just kind of felt like they were only there to fill a defense team quota or just to cause conflict when things are going too smoothly for a writer's liking. Yapul is a very good villain. I really like how Yapul goes about its goals. The Choju, I really don't like the terrible monster translation, are a really interesting group of monsters and concept. Higher dimensional bioweapons built solely to cause as much suffering as possible. They have really strange and otherworldly designs that really just communicate how they aren't from this realm of existence. My personal favorites are Veracrons 1 and 2, Vakashim, Dorogori, Lunatics, Soundgiller, Ace Killer, Barba, King Kappa, Zemislar, 
Black Satan, and Gasgagon. Ace is the first Ultra show to have a serialized plot, and it does pretty good with it before the show just kind of abandons it. The show really does just lose all of its steam in the second half, and it's just disappointing, especially with how great the first half is. I feel like this review sounds very negative so far, so let's talk about Ace's strong suits. The show does horror really well. Kaura's episode is probably the best example of this in the whole show, with a man's slow and agonizing transformation into the Choju Kaura. The Mazaron Man episode is also a good showing of Ace's horror elements, with the spirit of Yapul convincing a woman that a Choju is her baby and convinces her that she's going to give birth to it. Ace has a lot of just really good episodes in general. My favorite episodes include Shine, The Five Ultra Brothers, Go Up in Flames, Choju Hell, Monster vs. Choju vs. Alien, The Life of the Sun is the Life of Ace, Death Penalty, Five Ultra Brothers, Five Stars Scattered in the Galaxy, Scary Story of the Cattle God Man, Vengeance Demon Yapul, A Game Changer, Here Comes Zafi, A Total Defeat, The Five Ultra Brothers, Miracle, Father of Ultra, and Revenge of Veracron. But to be honest, you can pick any of like the first 29 episodes and just have a pretty good time with any of them. Ace loves to experiment with its visuals. There's a lot of unique visuals in this show and most of them come out very well. My favorites include the effect they use when they show the Yapul dimension, the effect over Ace and the giant Yapul's battle, and the one sort of TV screen effect they do over the fight between Ace and Veracon. I don't know how to describe it. Ace also experiments with its fight scenes. There's a way heavier use of pyrotechnics than any of the previous entries, with basically all of the Choju having the ability to shoot fire and missiles. Lots of Choju are dismembered or straight up cut in half and even decapitated. I think one of the coolest effects in the show is the flaming sword used by Firemons. Most tokusatsu shows wouldn't have the main hero just get that close to a flaming sword. There's a sequence where we see the sword stab through Ace's chest, and while it's obviously not actually stabbing the suit actor, it is obviously actually on fire. The soundtrack is also very good. I really don't have much to say about it. It's your standard Torufu Yuki affair. I'm just not realizing that I forgot to mention that the main hero, Ultraman Ace, has one of my favorite designs of any Ultra. Ace is one of the most unique looking Ultras. I really like his Mohawk crest thing and I really like that he just has a hole in it. It's got a name too, it's the Ultra Hole. It's kind of strange to me that no other Ultra really looks like Ace, except maybe his godson, Z. So, I think it's time I address something that I've been dying to say. I feel that the reason why a lot of the later episodes fall flat compared to the first half is because Ultraman Ace kind of tries to become a Kamen Rider show after Yuko leaves. Now, allow me to explain here. Most of the episodes from the 30s to early 40s follow a very similar formula to a good portion of the original Kamen Rider's episodes. Our main character is out doing his thing one day, then either his child sidekick or a random child has an experience that can only be blamed on the main villain. The kid comes to tell the adults, but they don't believe them. Then, somehow our hero hears of the occurrence and instantly knows what's up. Our hero goes to investigate, finds the main villain and deals with him. A little epilogue of our hero and the kids celebrating their win, and that's the end of the episode. This is, I think, the biggest flaw of Ultraman Ace. It forgets to be Ultraman. Now, Ultraman and Kamen Rider are two very different beasts. Ultraman's all about collaboration. The main hero is a part of a defense team, and Ultraman always either helps or is helped by the defense team when dealing with the episode's monster. While Rider is about a lone hero having to deal with things on his own most of the time, and mostly only in Showa. Ryder usually has a group of friends, but they usually get into trouble with Ryder having to save them. The group aren't Riders themselves, they're just normal people. Ryder has to usually deal with the main villains on his own. Later parts of Ace try to turn Seiji into a common Rider, and when that's not what the show is. Because the show tries to become Ryder, the attack team is usually just written off as not believing Seiji, which creates unnecessary conflict. Most episodes became the same Child of the Week plots over and over. It really kills any of the momentum the show built up over the first 29 episodes. And don't take this as me hating on Kamen Rider. I actually really like the original Kamen Rider, as well as Amazon, Kabuto, and W, but the writer opinions are for another time. <laughs> Ultraman Ace is a, a pretty good entry into Ultraman if you only watch the first half of the show. 
I really want to say that this show is amazing, but the unfortunate truth is that the second half kills the momentum of the show. I will say that I really did enjoy the show for the most part, but the show has some very glaring flaws that I really cannot ignore or write off as nitpicks. Ace is a solidish entry, and while I don't enjoy it as much as I had hoped, I still had a mostly good time. If you're a fan of Ultraman like I am, and you haven't seen it yet, check it out and come to your own conclusion. If you're new to Ultraman, maybe save this one for later. There's much better entries to get into, trust me. If I had to grade Ace, I'd give the show like a, a C. どこの国の人たちとも友達になろうとする気持ちを失わないでくれ。たとえその気持ちが何百回裏切られようと、それが私の最後の願いだ。